What is up, guys? It is Joel Hargett here, your favorite real estate broker, aka your next real estate broker. Uh, I'm coming to you today just because it is a very competitive market here in Charlotte. And a lot of times people are asking me, you know, hey, what is it that I need to, need to do to win an offer? I can't speak for every single situation um, or every single place in America, but I can speak for Charlotte, North Carolina as being on the seller side and the buyer side. I've seen what it takes to win an offer. Uh, I got a couple of things written down on my handy dandy notepad, um, and this is what A, I let my buyers know when they're looking to buy a home, and then B, when I have sellers, we just kind of look for this in offers, and that kind of lets us know, hey, you know, is this a good offer to take? Um, is it not a good offer to take? Um, again, there's certain rules to go by through in real estate, but every situation is different. Um, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. But if you are in the Charlotte market and you're looking to win an offer uh, on a home in Charlotte, first thing you need to do if you don't already have a real estate broker and sign an agreement with them, is reach out to me, Joel Hargett, at 704-996-6496 or J-O-E-L dot H-A-R, G is in George, E is in Edward, T-T is in Tom Tom at expvlt.com. But after you do that, or if you don't do that, regardless, I still love you, this is what you need to do in order to win an offer. So, Generally, in real estate, everybody wants to get a deal. I don't care who you are, you want to get a deal. <sighs> right now, I do have to tell you, if you're on the buyer side, unless the home has been listed for a long time, you're more than likely not going to get a deal. Just need to be upfront and honest. The way the market is, is crazy hot. You're going to probably pay over asking. That little asking price or offer price is a starting number. Let me say that again. That offer price, asking price, is a starting number. So you're going to have to come in over ask, more than likely. That's step number one. Step number two, if you have a good realtor, they need to run some comps for you. Those, compare, those comps are going to say what homes have sold in the area that are comparable and what they sold for. Why is that important? If you are getting a loan from the bank, the bank is going to send an appraiser out to that home. They're going to make sure that home is worth what you're saying you're going to pay for. It. If it is not, they will not fund all of that loan. Let me say that again. They're going to send an appraiser out to that home. If it doesn't appraise for what you said you're going to pay for it, they will not fund the entirety of that loan, which means you're going to have to come out of pocket even more money. I don't like to come out of pocket more money than I have to. I like to use OTP, which is other people's money, the bank. So make sure your realtor runs the comps. You might have to pay over what the comps say, uh, but you at least need to be aware that you might have to pay over that. Um, again, you can give me a call. I can go over that in a little bit more detail. But again, you're going to have to go over asking. If you hear that farting noise beside me, that is my lovely son who's trying to join me for the video. All right. So another thing that helps you win offers is your loan type. A, you can get a conventional loan. B, you cannot get a loan and have cash. Those two ones are going to be the best option for you. Uh, yes, there are other options out there, FHA loan, um, you know, all different types. But those two things are going to be the best. Just an all-cash offer, which means no appraisal at all. Yes, and only phone. And then um, after that, a conventional loan. Those two are going to be your best options. So let's first get into those. Um, you know, there are some people that are like, hey, you know, conventional loan, you got to do 20% down. Not true anymore. Reach out to a lender. If your realtor's telling you, you know, this number, that number, that's great. That's not their lane. I'm a realtor. If you ask me a finance question, I'm going to say, talk to a lender. 
because it's not my lane. So, talk to a lender. Had a meeting with the lender this morning. They told me they can give people conventional loans um, with only putting 3% down. So, like I said, conventional loan is going to be the way to your best bet if you're not doing all cash. Um, another thing, to win an offer in Charlotte, a short due diligence period. A uh, due diligence period is the time that you get to go into that home, you know, check it out, see if you like it, um, see if it smells good, see if there's any issues with HVAC, uh, anything like that that would scare you away from going through with the whole deal. Um, I generally recommend people to do a 10-day due diligence period. The reason why I recommend that is because that looks good to the, the seller because they pretty much know in 10 days either you're going to go through with the um, purchase of the home or you're not. Um, and the reason why I recommend a 10-day is because I have great relationships with lenders who use and get their appraiser out there pretty quickly. And I have a great relationship with um, some inspectors who can come out there and inspect it. And then within that 10-day period, even though it is a short period of time and all those wheels have to be turned in so we can get all the information back, um, most of the time we get all that information back and we can make a sound decision on whether we want to continue with the purchase of the home or whether we don't want to. Um, again, I am not saying you have to do a 10-day due diligence period. I'm saying this is what has worked in the past to win offers in Charlotte for myself and clients. Um, with making a short due diligence period, there is some risk to it. So I'm not telling you to do that again. I'm just letting you know that has one offers, but any type of thing you do in real estate, there's some type of risk. You're weighing the risk of an appraiser not being out there in time. And then the home appraises for $40,000 less than you offered. And now you got to come out of pocket an extra $40,000 or break the contract after the due diligence period is over and lose your earnest money. Um, so, just something to think about. Also, due diligence money. That is really, really important in Charlotte. Um, it's your skin in the game. Sellers want to know that you have skin in the game and that you want to buy their home. So, if someone puts in an offer for $1,000 due diligence, and you know, say the home is worth four hundred thousand dollars. Someone puts an offer at you know one thousand dollars due diligence, and they offer four hundred five. But if person B puts in an offer at four hundred two, four hundred two thousand dollars, but they put in fifteen thousand dollars worth of due diligence, nine times out of ten, my seller is going to take the one that put in fifteen thousand dollars worth of due diligence. I'm not telling you to do that. Um, I've had clients do that and more, um, but I've had clients do that in less and still win it. There's fun ways to mess with uh, contracts and offers to make your offer more um, attractive. Again, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to other brokers, um, and they can help you with it. Do not reach out to me if you already signed an agreement with another broker because I'm not trying to steal you from them. Um, but if you haven't, please reach out to me. But yeah, there's fun different ways, all these different ways to... Um, craft your offer to make it really attractive. Um, and then the main thing. I know I gave you a bunch of different things to do, like put down more due diligence money, shorten that due diligence period, offer above what the asking price is, but at the end of the day, it is gonna be something that you're paying. It's gonna be your house. Um, so you really have to think what that home is worth to you. Um, you know. Everybody likes to win. No one likes to lose. I don't like to lose. But if you're trying to get a home that's $200,000 or $300,000, whatever that number is, um, you know, yes, I recommend paying over right now in this high seller's market. But at the end of the day, you need to put that price tag um, to it in your mind. Say what it's worth. So for an example, if I'm buying a home for $300,000 uh, or it's listed for $300,000, I might be like, okay, I'll pay $320,000, but nothing more. And, you know, maybe $330,000 would have got me the deal. But at night, I know $330,000, it would have made me house poor and I wouldn't have enough money to do fun things. Or I would have kicked myself and been like, oh, this home isn't worth $330,000 for me. I just did it so I could win the house. Um, 
that's not a, somewhere you want to live with your investment. Um, so my recommendation, you don't have to take it, but my recommendation is only pay what you really feel the home is worth. Uh, even if an appraiser doesn't appraise it for that, they could appraise it higher or lower. Your realtor could tell you that it's worth more or less. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you what you feel comfortable with. And that's what I would 100% recommend. Um, again, if you have any questions and you don't have a realtor already, please feel free to reach out to me at 704-996-6496 or by email at joel.harget at exprealty.com. Again, if you do have a realtor, reach out to them. It's not that I don't want to help. It's just I don't want to poach anybody's clients. I think we can get fined up to $15,000 for doing that. Um, so I don't want to get fined $15,000. So if you have a realtor, reach out to them. Um, they'll definitely be able to help you out. But if not, keep watching these videos and uh, hit me up if you have any questions. Even if you're not looking to buy or sell currently right now, um, I'd be more than happy to help you. And if you're somebody who's trying to be a realtor, um, or a real estate broker, then definitely hit me up. I would love to let you know about how my transition went and um, <laughs> all the great things that happened since then. All right, guys, thank you for watching, especially if you made it to the end of this video. And uh, which, if you could, just like and subscribe. And uh, the more subscribers I get, the better technology I'll be able to get, and I'll make these videos way more fun and exciting for you guys. Um, and maybe he'll have more toys to show you. All right, guys, thanks for listening, and uh, good luck on getting your home.